Main Chick versus Side Bitch. Chapter 10, Arian. I was nervous sitting in the courtroom as Mr. Fabry argued my case for me. My baby daddy Paul sat on the other side in a suit and tie. The motherfucker couldn't even look me in my eye. Your Honor, my client has exhibited excellent recovery since her release from prison. She is gainfully employed and has a residence in a stable environment. My lawyer was speaking the truth. Everything I was supposed to be doing, I did, and all within six months of getting out of prison. Now I wanted my daughter back. I sat up straight, dressed in a suit with my hair down over my shoulders, looking like an innocent church member ready for Sunday school. I would have dressed like a kindergarten teacher if it meant I could have my daughter back. Counsel, what do you have to say about Miss Collins regaining her rights? I turned to see Paul's lawyer stand up. Your Honor, the child been living with my client for the last five years. I wanted to object. Tell the court that the only reason why I went to jail was covering Paul's ass. Since I've been locked up, he's changed into a corporate man and no longer the dope dealer he was when I went in. But now, he wanted to keep me away from my daughter like I was some fucked up person. I wasn't abusive. I just, just had a bad situation. You see, the child is comfortable in a stable school district and a home schedule, and we feel uprooting this child at this time is counterproductive to her development. I rolled my eyes at that bullshit. What was counterproductive was keeping her away from her mother, restricting my time to parent only on the weekends and every other Wednesday was straight bullshit. Judge, we disagree. My lawyer stood up ready to challenge, but the judge already struck his gavel against the desk. I've already made a ruling in this, and I don't need any further testimony. My heart was beating so fast it felt like it was in my throat. The child will hereby remain with the custodial parent for the time of one year when we will review this matter again. Court is adjourned. He hit the gavel again as we stood, but I didn't understand what just happened. Was it over? Was that it? I'm sorry, Miss Collins. We'll try again next year, my lawyer told me, but there was no next year. I'd waited five years to be in my daughter's life, and now that I was finally free, he was still standing in my way. You son of a bitch! Why can't I be her mother? I yelled across the courtroom at Paul. He shook his head at me as Mr. Fabry pulled me back. Your wife is not her mother. I am her mother, you punk bitch! If I was a nigga, I would have beat his ass. Stomped him out in the courtroom until his blood covered the linoleum floor. Miss Collins, please get a hold of yourself. I didn't say another word. Instead, I snatched my purse and left the courtroom, not bothering to look back. Through the halls, I ran. Reaching the door, I finally made it to the courthouse steps. I just wanted to get to my car where I could cry without anyone seeing me. I couldn't believe after all this time, after everything I've done to get her back, my baby still wasn't coming home. As soon as I got to the car and closed the door, the tears started falling. I couldn't help it. I couldn't hold them back. The tears came down my cheeks like a waterfall as I started the car. I didn't want Paul coming out of that courthouse with the satisfaction of seeing me cry after all the shit I have been through over him. I didn't snitch. I didn't mention one word about him or his partners. Instead, I went to prison, losing years of my life and years of my daughter's life while he and his dick-gobbling wife raised my daughter. The shit made my stomach turn. My skin felt hot like the sun was only a few feet away from me. I had to leave this area or I was going to do some shit that I wouldn't be able to come back from. Pulling out of the parking spot, I sped down the street, only stopping because a red light and cars were blocking me in. Wiping my face, I looked around paranoid that somebody would see me in my car crying like some crazed lunatic. But that's when I saw her. Miss Lawyer Bitch was waiting at the intersection, talking to some other bitch in a suit that looked just like her. I watched them both talking as if nobody else was there. I watched her in particular. I watched her like she was a fucking hologram. This wasn't real. There was no way that she would just turn up right now in front of me right after I got out of court. But as I watched, she turned her head and looked straight at me. For a moment, our eyes locked on each other. And at first I didn't think she recognized me, but then she smiled. She couldn't have been smiling at me. The same bitch that said that stupid shit outside the shop the other day. She walked across the street, right in front of my car, and the bitch had the nerve to wave. But the part that pissed me off the most was she winked. 
I wanted to turn my wheel, put my foot on the gas, and run the rich bitch and her friend over. This had to be her fault. This was all her doing. You know, with your custody case and all. Her words rang in my ears, and even as the light changed, I couldn't move. It took all the cars behind me to honk for me to pull and move away from the light. All because the bitch couldn't keep her man under control. She had to come fuck with me and my baby. Since the bullshit with the car and the shit she said, I hadn't even talked to Dwayne. I was done with it. We could make money together, but I was done fucking him. She could have his dusty ass, but why put my daughter in this? My hands gripped the steering wheel tight as I drove, trying to fight the urge with everything in me not to turn around and go beat the shit out of this lady. I knew she was the reason I didn't get my baby back today. But instead I drove, breathing deep, not looking in my rearview mirror at that evil bitch. It was one thing to be mad at me, curse me out, or even try to fight me, but to involve my child was the next level. My phone rang as I stopped at another light, and as much as I didn't want to talk, I heard a ringtone that was music to my ears. It meant Aviana was calling. I scrambled through my purse from my phone, picking up and hearing my baby made me cry all over again. Mommy, I made a bracelet for you. I couldn't hold it in. I managed to pull over, crying silently, trying not to make too much noise as my baby smoked. Oh yeah, that's, that's nice, baby. Mommy, when am I gonna see you? I felt like dying. Right here in the middle of the day, I just wanted to bomb myself up and die. I missed and loved this little girl so much. I wanted to see her way more than I was allowed to. Mommy, will I see you next Wednesday? Ma- Mommy, Mommy will see you next Wednesday, baby. I tried not to choke as I attempted to talk without sounding like the crying mess that I was. It was hard to explain to a child about next Wednesday when they were five. How many days is that? She was so smart, always asking me these questions. Just three more, baby girl. Can you count to three for mommy? Of course, mommy. One, two. She was so cute. Her little voice coming through the phone had me going as we counted together. And then... Three. Yep, you're right. That's mommy smart, girl. Just three days, okay? This hurt like hell. It hurt more than being locked up away because I wasn't free to roam around, but now that I was out and still away from her, I feel like I was dying. Okay, mommy, I love you. I love you too, baby. Bye-bye. She said bye and we hung up. The bastard Paul must have had his bitch of a wife tell Aviana to call me. That was the least that he could do, but I would deal with his ass one day. Eventually, he would feel everything that I felt, and so would Miss Lawyer, bitch. She had fucked with the wrong one, keeping me from my baby. I merged back onto the road, thinking of how this bitch had fucked me over. But then I had the perfect idea. Damn it, Arian. You smart, crazy bitch. I think you have a brilliant plan. I congratulated my damn self as soon as the idea hit my thoughts. If that bitch is going to keep you from your seed, maybe you should just have another one with her man. (laughs) I laughed so hard I almost swerved and hit a car (laughs) But the plan was brilliant I didn't know when And I didn't know exactly how I was going to make this happen But Dwayne was going to give me a baby I'll see how you play with people's kids then, bitch When you're paying me child support (laughs) I laughed so hard I almost cried (laughs) But this time instead of tears of sadness I was crying tears of joy I had just started the ultimate payback, and this way, nobody had to die.